Spoiler warning! Spoiler warning! Spoiler, 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 spoiler warning! Ah! Welcome back everyone, it's time to go balls deep into Jujutsu Kaisen And oh boy, Jujutsu Kaisen has revealed some new mind-blowing information on Itadori Yuji and his potential family So in this video, I'll be explaining my theory on how Itadori's parents were in fact the victims of the brain And how Itadori possibly has 9 other siblings Yes guys, my man's basically South Asian with such a big family But before I get into this theory and go over chapter 142 analyzing Itadori Dory's fate alongside his brother's Chosu. I want to thank all of you guys in the JJK community with your continuous support. With you guys smashing that like button and letting us know what JJK topic you want covered in the comment section below. It tells us just how much you want us to continue doing more Jujutsu Kaisen content. So what are you waiting for? Go black flash that like button right now! <laughs> Okay, so before I explain this theory, just so we're all on the same page, let's do a quick recap on what happened in chapter 141. Because in that chapter, Choso reveals on how many siblings he actually has. That chapter continues with Itadori and Choso, who are separated due to their one on one fight, respectively against Yuta and Nooya. Starting with Itadori, after feeling the obvious pressure from Yuta's overwhelming cursed energy, Itadori avoids blocking Yuta's attack with his own body. But sadly, he is fighting against this special grade sorcerer and ultimately gets that blade broken and himself sliced up. However, Itadori does manage to snap Yuta's katana in response, gaining his acknowledgement, who then notes Itadori is after all Gojo's disciple. Now just as Itadori tries to go in for an attack, Rika appears grabbing him by the face, saying, What's going on? <laughs> Allow me guys, I don't know why but I can't imagine Rika to have a feminine voice Rather she likely has a more scary and slow raspy one <laughs> Imagine the Rika voice sounds so sexy and shit <laughs> Alright alright Either way this sudden activation lets us know Yuta still doesn't have complete control over the cursed spirit he possesses Like we mentioned before At the end of the JJK prequel We were left with the assumption that Rika's curse was dispelled to move on to the next life However now we see Rika once again If this is not the full spirit of Rika it could be just the remnants of her leaving behind just the curse spirit itself of some sort. Either way, Rika is back or maybe she never really left. Regardless, Octomi stated in an interview that Rika can see what Yuta sees and they share the same images back and forth, meaning that she can act on her own depending on how she feels about the situation at hand. Coming back to Yuta though, he tells Rika that there is nothing going on and they're just playing around. However, he does get Rika to hold him down, apologizing to Itadori as he stabs him with the broken katana. We then see Sukuna's reaction who initially seemed agitated but then he senses something and smiled. This whole fight makes you think on why Yuta didn't just unleash Rika from the start if he was serious about killing Itadori. It clearly seems as though Yuta was testing Itadori. So what's going on? Is Yuta really going to kill him? Is this some scheme that Goja and Yuta came up with together? Well stick around till the end as I'll give you guys some insight on what Akutomi himself mentioned regarding this. However the scene then changes to Naoya and Choso's fight which goes back to un Unraveling Itadori's family history. We see Choso having a hard time using blood outside of his body due to Nooya's ridiculous speed. Nooya then hits Choso with his ability showing it's similar, if not the same, as Naobito's frame technique. After landing blows, Naoya asks Choso, who is he again? You know, after all, he's super curious on why someone he doesn't know can use the Kamo clan's abilities. Now this is when Choso responds by activating his flowing red scale technique as he exclaims, I am the eldest of 10 siblings! Like what? What? Nani? What does this even mean? And how is Itadori linked back to this statement? Well, don't worry guys, I'm here to break it down. First, I will need to explain whether Itadori is really related to Choso or if it's just a fabrication, which initially was explained by the theory of Itadori having a memory manipulation technique. But in a recent interview with Akutomi, he stated that the false memories aren't a foreshadowing or reference to any technique. Todo and Choso both sees memories that never existed for different reasons. So again, this doesn't mean that those memories 
are real. Rather, all that means is that Yuji isn't subconsciously using a technique creating these fabrications. But before we go into that, let's go over these false memories, starting with the first instance it happened. The Goodwill arc with Aoi Todo. In episode 15 during the Goodwill, Yuji was tasked with holding off Todo whilst the other Tokyo students chased down the curses that needed to be exercised to win the event. In this moment, Itadori and Todo had a one-on-one -on -one brawl, eventually where Todo asked Itadori his trademark question on what type of girl he likes. This is where Itadori answered, a tall girl with big ass like Jennifer Lawrence. <laughs> my guy. This automatically resonated with Todo and was the first instance these new memories were made, depicting his brother-like friendship with Itadori. The second instance was in chapter 105, page 9. After Itadori being cornered and defeated by Choso, Choso starts losing his shit as the chapter narration states that a memory was born inside of his mind that never existed. In both cases, these guys saw Itadori as their brother in some way, where Choso actually saw some sort of blood relationship due to his blood connection ability. In chapter 106, page 4, we saw this memory of Choso, where he along with his death painting room brothers, Esso and Kichizu, sat outside having dinner together with Itadori, indicating they are all a family. And a very important foreshadowing that was given in the same page was that on the table, we have six test tubes with six other death painting room in it. From this, we can assume they were also Choso's brother or sister, making a total of 10 siblings Choso is referring to, which I would assume removes the possibility that Todo is also part of the sibling group, but who knows? <laughs> I don't think he's a death painting womb. Wait, oh is he? Nah, but seriously, all in all, if we take what Akhtami mentioned in the interview debunking the idea that Yuji has a memory manipulation technique, rather there being a specific case-by-case -case reason for these memories to occur, we can conclude that Itadori might in fact be blood related to Choso. This is also reinforced by Choso's blood connection ability recognizing Itadori as part of his family. But what really adds to this is Akhtami's interview with Mondo Kobayashi, where he mentioned that he will definitely draw Itadori's parents at some point, and it will involve Norotoshi Kamo and Joso. Now, for those of you who aren't familiar with Norotoshi Kamo and who he is, well, there are two characters who goes by that name. One who is Norotoshi Kamo from the present, you know, the dude who went head to toe with Megumi in the Goodwill arc, and the one Norotoshi Kamo from the past over 150 years ago. This Norotoshi Kamo from the past was also one of the Brain Kun's hosts, just like like Ghetto is at the present time, and in his body, the brain conducted research to create existence with cursed energy beyond human understanding, resulting in the cursed death painting wombs. So if Octomi is referring to this Norotoshi Kamo, then the theory on Itadori being related to Choso through the brain gun would make a lot of sense. With that, we also don't know whose body the brain was in before he took over Ghetto's, so it might be possible that the brain was in fact in one of Itadori's parents who might have been a cursed user going by a different family name. Itadori was raised by his grandfather and doesn't really know much about his parents. Just before his grandpa died, he was about to reveal some important information about them. Sadly, Itadori wasn't able to hear it. In chapter 139, page 11, before Naoya's and Yuta's confrontation, Toso told Itadori to try to recollect and asked him if his father has stitches in his forehead. Now at first, this could imply that Toso is thinking about his own father, Norotoshi Kamo, but we know that he realized that the brain in Ghetto's body was his father and realized that anything is possible as we saw Choso explain in chapter 135 page 1 and 2. Choso didn't give any indication he was referring to Norotoshi from 150 years ago, rather it seems as though he knows that the brain throughout the time must have taken over a different body breeding other kids, one of them being Itadori. So Choso being over 150 years himself put two and two together and understood the relationship of how Itadori is his brother. Hence asking him that question. To summarize, right before the brain took over Ghetto, he must have used Itadori's parents as one of his hosts. If that is the case, then the brain who gave birth to the death painting rooms are technically Itadori's siblings in some ways, meaning Itadori, according to Choso, potentially had nine other siblings. I hope I was able to explain everything clearly. Let me know what you guys think about this theory in the comment section below. But with that guys, let me go into the second part of this video explaining what will happen to Itadori and Choso. And what what Yuta is really up to. But before I do that, let's go over chapter 142, finding the conclusion of what happens to Choso. We start with Nooya who begins to attack, realizing Choso is finding his move too damn predictable, so he decides to spice things up, countering Choso's counter-attack with a special weapon. Nooya is like, yo listen, I have to fight dirty and use this shank, adding that even though it would be easy for Choso to stay
stop the bleeding with his blood manipulation technique, but he won't last long while fighting him at the same time. Joseph's like, hi my G, I see you're well prepared, but this leads Noya to go on a rant about his ideals on cursed weapons. He's like, nah fam, I know it's lame as heck to bring a cursed weapon to a fight, but I don't think I would be able to win without it, given the respect Joseph deserves. At this point, we then also learn Noya's attitude towards his family and older brothers, looking down on them stating they just wander around disgracefully swinging their swords, adding it's surprising that they even complained about Toji. If you guys don't remember who Toji is, well Toji Fushiguro was Megumi's father, however he was killed by Gojo in the past. Toji was looked down by the Zenin clan due to not having any cursed energy at all because of heavenly restriction. However, as a counterbalance, he was gifted with extremely slick fighting abilities. Naoya then adds how he hates his older brothers, believing there is no point of them even existing if they are inferior to him and they should all just die. Due to this revelation, Choso who has a complete opposite view towards his siblings, goes big brain and shares his 150 years of wisdom to Naoya, letting him know that perhaps you are who you are because of your siblings. He then adds that whether they are superior or inferior, older brothers are role models for younger siblings. If they, the older brother, takes the wrong path, then the younger ones can avoid it. And if they do take the right path, the younger ones can follow it. This really hit deep for me because I myself have many older cousins who I see as role models. And I, as an older brother myself, feel the same way. This moment made me respect Toso so much more. Joso then tells Naoya what if he is strong because his older brothers were weak. Because even though he didn't have anyone to guide him, he had to walk in front of his younger brothers which made him strong. At this point, Joso goes all out, flooding the area with his blood. We get a narration explaining that because Joso is a death painting womb, he turns his cursed energy into blood keeping him from dying by blood loss. Eventually, Joso defeats Naoya with his original blood manipulation technique, Supernova, which was exclusively made by Joso because he holds Owned his skill for 150 years. This was legit an awesome comeback. Joso ends it by saying, Sorry, you didn't love your brothers, and I can't understand that. Suddenly, Yuta appears behind Joso, dragging Itadori's body. Before Joso could fully turn around, Yuta punches Joso, knocking him onto the ground. As Yuta then says, You look hurt, Nohoya san. What? <laughs> With that, we come to the end of the chapter. So, what's actually happening? Is Itadori and Joso going to die? No! I don't want to fucking die! Fuck! Yeah. Well listen up guys, there is a discussion within the community on whether Yuta is even actually out to kill Itadori and if he's actually playing the double agent against the sorcerers. Even a while back, our boy Dancho's hideout, who you guys should definitely check out by the way, broke down and pointed out in his tweet on how Yuta could possibly be acting like he wants to kill Yuji to gain the higher ups trust. The evidence given was that Yuta mentions going into a binding vow with the higher ups to ensure them he would complete their order to execute Itadori, but he does so sarcastically. It was as if he was making the implication to ensure them he had no intention of betraying them. But why would they even worry about that? Well, it could be that Yuta is more in league with Gojo than we think. If you consider the moment before Gojo was sealed, he made sure to point out Yuta still being around, even though Brain Kun just shrugged it off. On top of that, it was confirmed by Octomi in his recent fan book interview that whilst Itadori was with Nanami before the goodwill, Gojo was overseas to see Yuta. It's likely that Yuta is possibly Gojo's right hand man. And now that Octomi confirmed that Satoru is the head of the Gojo clan, it is possible that Gojo is preparing Yuta to follow behind him as a Gojo clan member and a student. Remember that Gojo did say that Yuta is his distant relative and could secretly be representing the Gojo clan in the future. This would allow Gojo to use Yuta as a secret weapon for his goal of changing the Jujutsu world. So whilst he was visiting Yuta, he more than likely explained the current situation with Yuji Itadori as Sukuna's vessel. Remember guys, Gojo even asked Itadori what happened whilst he was dead and Itadori answered that he doesn't remember. Gojo was intrigued by this so it's possible that Gojo knows that Sukuna has a binding vow with Itadori which then informed this information to Yuta for the future situations. This could also mean that Gojo shared more information with Yuta about the special grade curses like Jugo and Hanami and them working together. With all of these pieces, it's very likely that Yuta could know that there is more going on than what has been told to him. So to summarize, we believe that Yuta is trying 
trying to test Itadori by seeing if he can keep Sukuna from coming out. And if he can, he won't fully kill him. But that is a risky plan however. Considering Octomi confirmed Sukuna is stronger than Rika. You know, effectively being stronger than Yuta himself. So now that Yuta has knocked out Chosa and Itadori, what's more likely going to happen next? Well, there's still Megumi who could possibly show up. And also, Sukuna has yet to awaken. But with that, that's the end of this video. Let me know what you guys think. And don't forget to smash that like button, subscribe and ding that notification bell to stay updated with our content. Till then, I'll catch you guys next time.